So Tom has set up a definition that really focuses love on an outward expression toward others, acting intentionally, mm -hmm. responding to the other for their, the sake of their flourishing and their well-being. But there's, a, there's an internal component to love, too, something you might think of as a psychological, emotional experience. I mean, what is your perspective on a definition of love? Well, working in psychology, since the term itself is rarely used, um, I've learned I have to be flexible, and part of my task is when I'm reading what a psychologist uh, says about a research finding or about a theory, is I have to figure out what's their implicit understanding mm. and then kind of how does that connect with what I see as a more uh, adequate definition. Mm. Um, so um, psychologists talk about norms, for instance, um, and one of the norms is uh, uh, I will help you because I anticipate that you'll help me later if I help. Mm -hmm. So there's a, we kind of aim for a sort of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an internal You scratch norm my back, sort of I'll yeah. scratch yours. Yeah. 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 And actually, w one of the big issues is whether or not that really counts as love. Some people would say it has to be sacrificial, um, it has to be totally um, uh, this love beneficent act has to be totally to meet the other's needs and not uh, one's own, uh, own needs. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one of the differences among, uh, it's a philosophical, theological, psychological uh, difference. I actually like the idea of kind of being inclusive and saying, if I can love my wife, um, and that's Christian love, uh, even though I get something uh, back from it. Uh, uh, there's a, a funny, to me at least, a story along those lines. Uh, Tom and I first met uh, at a conference at Calvin and we left our families behind. And uh, <laughs> One of the tricky things about studying love is that immediately you get jokes because people assume you're talking about romance, you're talking <laughs> about sex. Um, and so she kept talking about, oh, Alan's going off in his summer of love. <laughs> and of course I detect a little dig in that because <laughs> my kids were uh, three and six at the time, and I left her for three weeks. Uh, so, but the, the, here's the quid pro quo. Um, a year later, she went to Israel for three weeks, leaving <laughs> me with the, the kids. So it, it kind of balanced out, and that actually seemed kind of right and nice. And, yeah. uh, so I, I think that's fully Christian love, although some, uh, like Andres Nikran, uh, would say, no, no, that's not love. Uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm willing to have it more inclusive. We need, I think there has to be an openness to self-sacrifice uh, in a robust notion of uh, Christian love. Mm. Um, just as uh, Jesus died for us, that's sacrificial. Um, so I, I want to include that in the definition of love. Some psychologists are very suspicious about uh, this notion of self-sacrifice. Yeah. It's unhealthy. Mm. Uh, so I agree with Al Alan here, and I think it has to do partly with how we think about ourselves as relational people. I'm of the view that we live in an interrelated world, and what I do for you is likely going to end up affecting me in some way or another, positively or negatively. And so the idea that I could act in such a way that I get absolutely no benefit whatsoever is very suspicious in my mind. Now, there is the possibility that I could act primarily for your benefit and secondarily for my own. So it's a sort of a primary uh, issue there. Mm -hmm. But if we truly are related, if we take the Christian example of being in the body of Christ, you know, for all a part of the body, and that body extends beyond Christians to the whole realm, then this notion that altruism, love, true generosity is only for the other's good, I think we can set that aside and say, okay, in some instances it can be primarily for the other's good, but it's okay also to act in ways that can benefit myself. Self-love is genuine and appropriate. Indeed, it's, it's the, the foundation, at least, for the communication of uh, the greatest commandments. Exactly. The love of God, of course, is, um, uh, isn't tied to uh, the self, but the love of neighbor, uh, the foundation of that love is love your neighbor as yourself. And so you ha there has to be some kind of robust sense of seeking your own well-being and understanding what that means, what it is to flourish. And then the high, the high calling of that neighbor love is to seek another's well-being as much as you seek your own. There's an interesting history of interpretation of the as love. I, I categorized three responses. One said, well, self-love is natural, and so you want to kind of bring up 
your love for others and God to kind of your natural level of love for self. Um, the second approach it says, wait a minute, some people don't really love each other very well. Um, and so particularly humanistic psychologists say, well, the, so first you need to love yourself because you can't love other people or you can't love God if you don't love yourself. Mm. Um, and so the stereotype is then they move to Marin County and spend 40 years learning how to love themselves. And <laughs> somehow they never get around to loving <laughs> others or God. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a little suspicious uh, of that. Um, and actually, my own mother, who was a very loving person, never liked herself, wasn't very good at loving herself. Uh, so the third perspective says these are really kind of three um, separate but um, ideally interrelated categories. So uh, the right kind of love of, of yourself uh, is good uh, because we're of worth. Mm -hmm. um, here's an instance, of, I, I'm an Episcopalian, and for the most part, I'm more conservative than Episcopalians. Uh, but there's old language in one of the services uh, that says, I am unworthy even to gather up the crumbs from under your table, <laughs> uh, uh, which I call the, the prayer of self-abasement. Yeah. <laughs> I just cannot go there. I say, what, do you mean, what do you mean I'm not worthy to pick these up? Uh, God made me, God, uh, Jesus died for me. Yeah. I am, I'm worthy of picking up the crumbs. Yeah, uh, I'm exactly. sinful, uh, but, but I can't go there. So uh, that's the, there are right kinds of self-love. Mm -hmm. um, and if it's only self-love, that's not the right kind of self-love. So I, I think there are three uh, uh, kinds of love that should be integrated. Yeah.